Are you looking to do a virtual presentation that uses overlays and graphics or animations, but you're not actually sure how to start? Well, you're in the right place. This is part two of a two-part series where I take you behind the scenes and I show you the exact steps that I follow, whether I'm presenting live or if I am recording like this right now. Now, part two is focusing on the actual presentation. So the steps leading right up to when I'm actually presenting, whether that is live to a group or whether that is doing a recording. And in part one, I talked about the planning and preparation, putting together all of the scenes and getting that organized. I will typically do that in advance. So maybe a week before, a couple of days before, but I really wanna get that done and out of the way. All of the stuff I'm gonna talk about today happens the day of, and that's why I grouped it together. The very first thing that I do is make sure that my tech is set up properly. And when I say that, obviously I mean, I wanna turn on the lights, the camera, the microphone, that makes sense, but there might be a specific tech setup I need for that particular workshop or presentation or video. For example, right now, just over here, <laughs> I have a camera set up on a tripod. It is actually my iPhone because of the camera quality. Also, I can use a wireless option for that so I don't have a cable running behind me. I've used different configurations, but right now I am using the phone. If I switch to another scene, you can actually see my desk. This is live right now as I present and it's being recorded. I have this shot a little bit further back than I might if I were say to be showing a Stream Deck. So if I'm doing Stream Deck training, which I talked about last week, I would actually have the phone positioned closer and angled down on the Stream Deck for the demonstration. In this case, I actually wanted to show the whole setup because this is what I am looking at anytime I do a presentation, whether that is live or recorded. So I have a couple of Stream Decks, I have my Loop Deck, I've got my big monitor where I have my notes, I wanna make sure I've got my windows set up. So in today's presentation, I am showing a checklist I use. I've got my notes for today on dark mode. I have my Stream Deck configuration that I'm gonna show you soon. I've got my main monitor, which is where I have all of my scenes and Ecamm, or if you're using OBS, you can have that here. And up top, this is my teleprompter. So I'm looking directly into the teleprompter. And while you can't see it clearly, I can see exactly what is being recorded. So that is called a confidence monitor. So all of this is set up and once I've got it set up the way I want, then I'm good to go. But I always wanna make sure that the tech is being set up the day of, so I have enough time to test it, to set it all up. And once I've got that all set up and ready to go, then I move on to my next step, which is all about the Stream Deck. So with this Stream Deck, which is what I use for my presentations, I will make sure that it is customized depending on what I need to do. So I actually have a profile that I would call dynamic. It's my presenting profile. It looks different with every presentation. And sometimes I'll have some old keys that I've programmed that are still on there, which is totally okay. I am using this right now. So actually, if, I, if we look here, you can see this scene right here is my Stream Deck software. This is the scene I'm on right now. Typically, I will use this, see the top left corner is next scene. If you looked in part one, you will see that I have everything in a linear order. So all I have to do is press next scene, next scene, next scene. I am just pressing that top left button over and over and over again, because that's how I've set it up. But sometimes I know I might wanna to toggle between a couple different views. For example, here we've got the Stream Deck software, which is what we're on now. Beside it, I have the desk shot. So if I wanted to press this right now, now you can see the desk shot that I showed you before. If I go to the side, which it's hard to see here, but if I go to this button and press that, now I'm back to the scene that shows the software. If I know I'm going to be going back and forth, I will set up a few scenes, but typically I will mostly rely on just progressing to the next scene that I have set up in advance. The other things you'll notice here is that I have some text. So this, these four at the bottom, plus this one here, this is my website. So I have a quick link if I want to type that out. I also have breakout room instructions. I recently ran a live workshop where I had four breakout rooms. To save me time, I pre-populated the instructions in the text box. So when I'm in the Zoom call, I just put my cursor in the chat and I press that button 
and all of my instructions go out. You'll also notice stuff like in the top corner, I have live demo mode because I know I'm gonna need that. I find the corners top real estate, so I am going to customize these based on what I need. For example, right below, I have hide comment, meaning if I am live on YouTube, I am going to have that in the top corner because that is how, if I've shown a comment, I can just quickly press that button and I can remove the comment. So I'm always trying to optimize the workflow. You'll also see on the bottom, if I click finish, that will stop this recording that I have going right now. Once I've got all of the Stream Deck set up the way I want, then it's time to go through everything using the Stream Deck. So this is where I'm going to review the scenes. Now, when it comes to reviewing the scenes, what I'm trying to do is make sure that every scene is working, that any window I'm showing is actually coming up correctly. If I have a second camera like I do today, that that is showing up correctly. So if we go into live demo mode, I can see here that I've got the scenes for this video where I've got tech, stream deck, review, that's where I am right now. If we scroll down to what I set up last week for my stream deck essentials course, you can see I've actually got folders. So all my modules now have folders and this was the one I set up last week. So I would go through scene by scene and I click next scene on my stream deck. And each time I do that, I'm just making sure everything is running before I actually present or before I record. This is a really important part to do once the tech is set up, once the stream deck is set up. Now I just wanna make sure everything is actually going to work and that I don't have surprises. If you've ever been on a stream with me where I suddenly seem surprised, it's because I maybe skipped that step or I took something for granted and I don't want to do that. I don't wanna make any assumptions when it comes to a live presentation. Recording, I can always pause and fix it, but not while I am live. Which brings me to the next thing, which is my checklists. I wish that I was just good at remembering every single thing I have to do, but honestly, whether it's nerves or feeling pressure for time, especially if I'm live and the countdown is on, then I always rely on checklists. I have done a video on this, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but I do have a sample of a live presentation checklist that I shared in a previous video, so I'll link to that in the description. It could look really simple, like above my Elevate Your Voice workshop, I have a checklist that looks very similar to this, where I wanna make sure that I just, the really simple things are done, that I'm wearing my earphones, that I test the sound, that I turn on Zoom's original sound, that I've got closed captions. So anything I need to know, I can just paste that above my notes for that workshop. Sometimes I will bring out a more detailed list, like this one where this happens before the presentation and this is day of, this is turning on the tech, getting everything ready. So it's very similar to what I've talked about now. When I start the presentation, so if I'm actually running a live call, I wanna make sure that I am, if I have a co-host, that I add the co-host. If I'm recording a meeting, that I record it. If I've got breakout rooms, that I'm setting those up. And finally, after the presentation, if it's been a lot going on, it really helps to be reminded of things like turning off your camera so that you don't, oh, I don't know, leave your camera running on all night, which yes, I have absolutely done that before. So now that I have set up my tech, I have set up my stream deck, reviewed everything, gone through all the scenes and look at my checklist, then that, and the checklist is right before I go live or before I record. So then it's time to actually do the presenting itself. Personally, I actually prefer live because once you start, you start, you're going, it's happening, you can't change it. One of the things I will say, which if you have watched any of my videos, and I'd say 80% of my videos have, were streamed live, if I make a mistake, and mistakes happen, sometimes tech goes wrong, sometimes I forget what I'm gonna say, I just take it in stride. I do not take myself that seriously. I usually smile, maybe laugh about it, and then just keep moving on. Please, if you're recording, if you were not recording, if you're going live, just know that mistakes happen and that if you smile and just accept and move on, people are much better than if you get really, really stressed about it or you start to fret or make a big deal out of it. That can increase the tension of the people you're talking to. So just taking things in stride, laughing it off, don't take yourself so seriously. It really does make a difference with your audience. When it comes to recording, like I am doing right now, Typically, my preference is 
one and done. And I know this is probably not advice, but this is what works well for me. I treat it like I am presenting live, like there is an audience and there's no going back. Personally, this is just my method. It is one of the things that helps me get content out there without fretting over it. Otherwise, if I was copying all the things together and always editing, I would probably just spend way more time and not get content out there that can help you. But I will say that if I'm recording, if I flub in the first 20 seconds, maybe the first minute, sometimes even two, I will just throw it out and start again. You might say, whoa, how much time does it take you? Well, I actually think that because I use scenes and all of my graphics are set up, that I spend way less time if I just restart than if I were to record everything and then go back and edit it all and add all the graphics and everything there. I have tried where I will pause and just start talking again and then I can edit it later, but that's not my preference. <laughs> and so do what works for you if just pausing and starting over again, or maybe you kind of clap in between to note that you are starting fresh, then absolutely do that. But one of the beautiful things about presenting with scenes and recording with scenes is that you have already taken the time to kind of pre-edit. You've added all of your graphics and everything that you need so that even if you are just trimming out some mistakes or tidying things up, then it's still gonna be done a lot faster than if you have to add everything in post. I think that's it. I think those are all the, all the steps that I follow. And this is honestly something that has worked for me. It might look different for you. I'd love to hear in the comments if you do something different or if you have a preference that someone else might benefit from hearing. But hopefully this has given you some insight into how I set up and present both live and recorded so that you can go and really stand out in virtual meetings and presentations.